Hey everyone, Kevin here. What I've got here is my PSP Go. And what I'd like to do in this video is show you how you can use this as an emulator. Just give you a basic understanding how you can set this up to play retro games. One of my most popular videos on my channel is about the Sony PSP being a fantastic emulation device. And I stand by that. You know, I've got a couple of other handheld consoles, but I still think that overall this is the best handheld you can buy for retro emulation, playing classic games from the 80s and 90s. And it has been requested many times, I apologize for the delay in doing this video. So, I'll just quickly give you an overview. First thing to note is that this comes with 16 gigabytes of storage. I have, if I can get it open, I've got another 16 gig added in, give me a total of 32. And I've got an official Sony M2, they're very rare now, actually. Now. You can apparently use an adapter to use a micro SD card. And there's apparently there's adapters out there, so you can use like 128 gig. It's not something I've used, so I can't tell you how well it works. But what I've done is, you can see game here, I've got system storage and memory stick. What I've done is stick all the PSP games that I've got there. I've got all of those on my... Um, on my memory stick and in the system storage I've got all the retro games so all the classic games from the 90s there 80s and 90s and all the newer games in the memory stick it's just the way I've done it so I'll be showing you how you do this um, on the computer and again just to remind you this isn't a comprehensive guide it really, it really is just a, to give you a basic overview of how this works um, and I do recommend going to a forum such as GBA Temp it's a really good forum and you'll find a lot of information about how you do this properly there. So you can see here the system software I've got is 6.6 and if you've got a higher one like 6.61 or higher you might have to downgrade in order to do it properly. Um, what I'm going to be showing you is how you put on, um, it's a, a kind of hack called a Pro CFW and the reason that you add that in, you'll see it here if you go down, See this? Pro, fast recovery. Sometimes you'll get that it won't load up. So when something doesn't load up, what you do is you run the update or the, the flash thing and it'll just reset and then everything runs okay again. And it just, it works well with the emulators. You know, I've not, I've not tried it without it, but what have we got here? Sonic and Knuckles. So, Sonic the Hedgehog, right. Now, look at my video about how good this is as an emulation device. I don't want to sit and show you all again because I've done a video about that. But you can see that this is a really good emulation device. Now, a lot of comments you got in that video were, you know, things like, well, you can do this on your phone, but any serious gamer will tell you, you can't replace the functionality that you get from an actual handheld, it feels better in the hand, you've got buttons that are responsive, you're not using those stupid virtual buttons, and I know you can buy those little controllers that grip to your phone, but personally I don't like I don't like that whole setup because it drains the battery in your phone, which you need for, you know, messaging and phoning and browsing the web, watching videos, etc, that's for a start, but I just don't like the whole setup, I, I like to have a complete handheld system, and um, now the emulators, and you can see here, um, okay. Now, this is the thing. You see I was pressing a lot of different buttons. I tend to just do that. I just go push all the buttons. All the emulators I've got on here, they're all different. And they all work in different ways. So, you can see, um, right, okay. So, some of them you'll find with, with these emulators, right? Some of them you'll find that X goes forward. And some of them you'll find that, you know, X is the action to select something and zero. The circle goes back. Uh, and others, others you will find that circle goes forward and X goes back. I don't know why some of them didn't follow the, um, you know, just the, the buttons used on the Sony PSP because if you know, that if you, you've got a Sony PSP, whether it be 1000, 3000 or the Go or whatever, then you know that X goes forward. Oh, I'm in the wrong screen now. Game. X goes forward or cross, and circle goes back. Now, 
just to show you now all these different emulators as I said some X go forward circle goes back and you can see here I've got emulators for the Atari Lynx and um, Master Boy does and um, Game Boy Advance and you can see there it does Game Boy Advance Game Boy Color Sega Master System um, Sega Game Gear I've got other ones here SNES 9X there's a couple of SNES games that don't work too well I've got all the Atari systems 7800 5200 Vetrix um, 2600. Now there's a lot of other emulators that are, emulators that are out there that I've not actually used. NES and Mega Drive and SNES are probably the ones that I play the most. And I get through times where I play this all the time and then I don't play it for a few months and then I play it again. And I've had this for several years now and it still works great. So the reason I've talked all this is I just want to give you a general understanding how all of this works. Um, you can see I've got all the emulators here but it's worth noting that on my memory stick I've got the ISOs for PSP games. See, there's recovery in that there. And, you know, these ones, these ones don't require uh, emulators. You know, it's, it's all set up. You just drop it into the, into the folder. I'll show you that in a bit. So, you've got your PSP and, you know, assuming that you've got um, you know, one of the latest versions. Now, the thing is, it doesn't matter what you've got, they can all be, you can play emulators on the Sony PSP, whatever version you've got. Um, but, I'll just, there's no point showing you that just now. Um, so you can play it using any software you've got, but if it's an older one, it's easier. You know, there's, there's different workarounds depending on what you do. Despite all that, what I would say is, again, this is the best emulation device. It's much easier to set things up as it is on the 3DS and things like that. Okay, so let's show you how we do it. What we do is we plug it in. I've got the cable plugged into my computer. And I've got USB connection. And I've now connected to USB mode. And now when I jump over to my computer... Okay, so I'm now on my computer and you can see that two additional drives have been added as soon as I go to the USB connected mode on my Sony PSP. Now the G drive here is my memory stick and the H drive is the internal storage. So you'll see there's a lot more folders in there. With the memory stick, all I've done here is you've got PSP game and things like that there. But, uh, and you can see there's been like save files and things things that are there. You don't have to, you know, get into the nitty gritty and go into all the folders there. What you just need to know is what you can do to play your games is you just put all the ISOs in the ISO folder and that's all the games for your PSP. You drop them in there and they will appear in the memory stick menu and you'll see all the games listed there. That's all the games that were listed when I was showing you a few minutes ago. And now, okay, what we've got here is the H drive. Now, again, you can place ISOs there, but I've not because... I've just kind of separated putting the the newer games in the memory stick and the older games on the storage. But if you don't have a memory card in, you might only want to use the internal storage. Then you could put your ISOs in there and it will appear in the menu and you can, you know, play those games as well. There's a lot of these folders that don't really do anything. Music, etc., picture. I mean, who's going to use the PSP Go for that? Well, maybe some of you do, but it's not something I'd ever use it for. What you need to look at here is the PSP folder. This is the important folder. And if you click on PSP, you see different things here, theme, save data. It's the game folder that you want to pay attention to. And you can see here, Atari, blah, 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 blah. Now, we've got all the emulators here, all the different systems. You can see fast recovery there as well. And say NES, for example, has all the ROMs. And there's all the different emulator files. Um, it's the same kind of setup. With Atari. Now it is worth noting at this point that these are all different emulators. I'll show you this in a, in a bit, but just to remember, these are all different. I've downloaded all of these separately, but you can see here the fast recovery and the CIPL flasher. That was the the two things that come up: the pro and the the, the recovery and the flasher that help you recover games. Just sometimes you might have to do that. It will see that the game isn't working, and you run the flasher, and everything's working perfectly again. So that's all the emulators I've got. So. Let's jump over and I'll just talk about how you get started on in all this. Now, GBA Temp is a forum that I recommend dropping by. 
it's you know the best place to ask questions. You normally get an answer within a day or so. A lot of um, gamers on it, and you know you get great advice there. This is a PSP hacking uh, FAQ page. I'll link to this in the description area, and you can see here. I told you that I had firmware six point six, and pair this graph. If you've got six point six or less, your PSP is hackable. Now that's the situation I was in. If you're higher, you can downgrade. Now, I don't believe I had to downgrade in the past. I don't think that was something I ever had to worry about. But if you're a higher version, then you can downgrade. If for any reason you can't, then there's a thing called a half byte loader. Now, I'm not going to attempt to explain how that works because I've never had to use it. So you can see the link on this page, half byte loader. And I don't think it's difficult to use. It's just a different way of loading your games in. And there's a lot of, you know, questions and answers on this page as well. You'll find a lot of information there about how you set it all up. The thing I was talking about, the, the Pro CFW, this is what you should put on onto your PSP. You can see it here, uh, custom firmware for your PSP Go, Pro CFW. Now, it's got the download files there, and it's got the latest version. Now, again, it's worth noting, I've not updated mine in several years and it still works perfectly. I've got no intention of ever updating it. But you can see here, you have to update your firmware to 6.6. 6. Uh, 6. 6. You can downgrade as per that uh, image there, that diagram. Now, here it explains what it does. You've, it provides you several folders in the PSP game folder, fast recovery, pro update. And those were the ones that I was talking about in there. You can see them all there. And those are the ones you're going to use, and it's, it's going to help you with the emulators. All you really do is you download the file, and then you just add it to your system. You, you can see with the file structure, you know, it, it's very simple, actually. That It goes PSP, and then it's got game, and then you put it, your emulators and all that in there. It's very, very simple. I don't think you're going to have any problems with that. So I'll link to both of these pages to give you a head start. And, you know, you should be okay with that, but just refer to this a discussion room GBA Temple link to that as well to point you in the right direction. So finding emulators is very very simple as well. If you type in PSP emulation, there are other websites that you know that will provide emulators. But top result is GBA Temp again. It's the wiki area. Just click on that, and you'll find lots and lots and lots of different emulators. You can see how they've split it up into different generations. So they got first and second generation, third, fourth. And the whole page just lists all the different emulators. Now you can see I've installed quite a lot of these, the 2600, 5200. I've not installed the uh, ColecoVision. Uh, I've installed Vetrix. I've installed the NES, of course. And there's like PC Engine, Jaguar, you can play Sony PlayStation 1. The PSP um, is a fantastic emulation device for the PSP, for PS1 games. Sega Saturn is not something I've tried. Nintendo 64 is not something I've kind of played too much with. It'd be good. Tari Jaguar, there's, everything's listed on this page. So, you've got the old classic Commodore 64. This is the thing. I, I could add another 20 different emulators and different systems to the PSP Go. I've got plenty of room to do it. It's really, really versatile. And it really backs up what I said before. It is one of the best um, emulation devices out there simply because it's so easy to, to hack it put your emulators on it and start playing games. You don't have to mess around. The 3DS is an absolute pain to do that. So if you look here, Nestor J, that's the one that I've used, but you can see there's different emulators down here. The one that I used was Nestor J and there's a better version and there's a, an older version there. Maybe that's more stable, but you click on download and you'll get taken to a website that you're scared is going to destroy your computer, but you know, it wouldn't be linked on GBA temp if it wasn't safe. Now, I've just got my desktop. So this is an example of an emulator. You would have to download each emulator separately for each system. You can't, there's not just like a zip file that's, that gives you everything. Well, I haven't found one. So you have to do it all yourself. And there we go. So extract all the files so this is the NES one so you've got NES there okay so here we've got the different files you've got PSP and then you go down it's game Nesta and all these files here 
this is the emulator. Now, if you go back here at game, you can see this is called Nesta AOEX R3. All I've done in mines is, is renamed them. So I, re I renamed Nesta or whatever the hell that was called. Yep, Nesta AOEX. I've renamed it Ness and just tried to simplify it so that when I come back here, I know exactly what each one is for. You know, if I was setting up different emulators, maybe I would put, you know, like Ness Emulator 1 or Ness stroke brackets Nesta. You can organize, organize it any way you want. Just organize it the way that makes sense to you. I've just picked an emulator that I liked. And since I started that, there's only one that I changed. I changed the Game Boy Advance emulator a few months ago because the previous one was really slow and it wasn't working correctly. And again, I just copied all the files over and, you know, I've got the ROMs in there. But with the NES here, you can see all I've done is copied it over and then I've placed all the ROMs in it. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's very, very easy to do. And, you know, like I've installed all the kind of games I've won. The reason, one of the reasons why I've not went through and installed all these other ones, you know, I grew up with the Commodore 64 and things like that. And, you know, I'm tempted to play some games on that as well, but, and the Amiga as well, that was a great system. The reason I haven't is simply because the sheer volume of games I've got. I mean, I really tend to play this when I'm on planes and things like that. And it's really just to kill time. And there's so many games I've got on there I've never played yet. The process is fairly simple, guys. Um, all you have to do is install that firmware. Make sure you've installed that on your PSP. Jump over to the emulation page, download the emulators that you want, throw in your, your ROMs into the correct folder, and, you know, if for any reason it's not showing, then it you will figure out how, how it is, because the reason I'm saying you'll figure it out is because if you looked at the Game Boy Advance one, you can see that I've got everything under ROMs, but in other ones you haven't. Sometimes that's, you know, most of the emulators will actually work, you know, whether you put these here or whether you put them in a ROMs folder. But you really just have to play around with the emulator. Some of them you have to put it in top level. Some you can put in a folder. Others you can't. Just play around with it and you'll, you'll get it. It's very, very easy to do. And I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun with the Sony PSP. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this tutorial useful. I know I haven't covered everything because there's so many different, um, you know, ways that you can do this. It depends on the firmware you've got, etc. And it has been several years since I've done this. But I, I can remember the, uh, remember the general process. And this is all you have to do. GBA Temp is your friend. Drop by there if you get any doubts about what to do. But I will include all the links here so that you can check it out yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care.